visible, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, grammar session, twenty-first May, two thousand and the fifteen or nineteen. This is the nineteen. Okay. All right. Um, by the end of today's, uh, first of all, uh, welcome everyone to this session, and welcome all of those who are watching us online, and um, hopefully you have benefited from our grammar lessons from past couple of weeks. Uh, do you like the idea of this grammar session every day before starting the class? Yeah. This is beneficial, isn't it? Uh, this will help you improve your English. You see, I just used a grammar rule here. Help you increase your English. And normally, what are we used to? Can you help me in, or can you help me in cooking? Yeah. The way we say it. Nitika or Nikita? Nitika. Nitika. Nitika, can you cook food? You can, yeah? I can't. I can boil water. So, <laughs> so it's a Nitika, can you help me in cooking? And it's, it, this sentence is 100% wrong. So whenever you see this word help, you will never ever use in doing something. You never say help in doing something. I can't see you. You are hidden. Can you just change a seat a little bit? Maybe one or two seats on the right hand side. Now you take a seat. So, help in doing something is wrong. It should be help to do something. But help to do something is basic. There is an advanced structure for this one. Help do something. Help write a letter. Not help to write a letter. Help write a letter. Can you help me write a letter? Advanced structure. So that's what I said. These structures are going to help you gain good command, not help to gain. Help, gain. Yeah. If I ask my uh, bank with the loan, yes, yeah? so I'll say, uh, can you please help me get a loan? Not can you please help me to get a loan? Of course, can you please help me to get a loan is basic English, but there's an advanced and how this is how native speakers say, help somebody do something. Help me gain. Help me write. I can help you achieve your desired scores. Sounds odd. This is right. I can help you achieve your desired scores. Monet, so you don't use preposition. So help to do something, right, but basic. Help do something more advanced. Help in doing something. 100% wrong. Is it clear? On that note, let's start our grammar class. And today we are going to do the, the very first grammar that I will do here today is going to be purely collocation based. So I maybe I toned down a little. So I thought that, you know, I'm doing a little bit complicated rules. Let's use an easy start with a, on an easy note. Why are you eating your pain? I should be the one eating the pen because I'm, fast, I'm fasting. Anyways, so let's do this. Now tell me. Right or wrong? Is this sentence right or wrong? Well, it's not a sentence. Is this collocation right or wrong? What do you mean by accustomed? Habitual, yeah? We talk about habit. Say accustomed. Yeah, we call habit. So when you came to this country in Australia, initially, were you, were you used to the weather? You weren't, yeah? Because in our countries, the weather is totally different. You turn off the fan for like three seconds, and you'll be, in, you'll be ba uh, bathing in water in your sweat already. But here, the, the weather is a little different. So you dire dire over with, over time you became accustomed for with this weather or accustomed accustomed of accustomed to accustomed all accustomed is a collocation it always comes with to just like used I, and meaning is the same how easy is this how easily can we remember this one I'm used to I'm accustomed to 
So you used to, accustomed to, both of them are interchangeable. Both of them can be used. In, so this sentence, uh, this collocation, accustomed for is wrong. It should always be accustomed to. And the meaning is? Same. Habit. Meaning is the same, yeah? So accustomed to means used to. How about next one? Number two. Let's write it here. Tell me. Collocation number two. I am aware about the changing rules. I am? Easy, easy. How easy is this? I am aware of. Are you? If it is a question. Are you aware? Off. Still off. Doesn't matter whether it is a question or it's a statement. Aware is a word. It will always be followed by off. Off is something we always talk about. in. We always use this collocation in a lot, case, in a lot of different things. A lot? Of, isn't it? A lot of, yeah? A myriad? Of. A number? Of. Or it could be the number? Of. Oh, we did this rule yesterday, didn't we? A number of? The number of. Something like this. Uh, how, about it? how about this? I informed him about the robbery of the robbery. I informed him of the robbery. Inform somebody of? something so off is a preposition you can be used in a lot of ways so similarly here aware about is 100 percent wrong it should be aware of yeah how about this next one he is capable to dance yeah capable of dancing let's write it here as well capable of dancing how about if i change this capable with Able. Is able of? At this time, the collocation will change. Able ke saath, you will always use to. Let's write both actually. Able to, but meaning is the same, isn't it? And capable of. So capable of and able to. Yeah. How about this? Yeah. Oh, this one I love. So, do you know when you when you are when you find a partner on that website where you are looking for matrimonial services, you're looking for a prospective partner so you can get married to. So you the first thing you check is your compatibility. You check your compatibility. So you say I'm not compa I'm not compatible. I'm not compatible to I'm not compatible to him, to her. I'm not compatible to him or to her. Is 100% wrong. How can we correct it? I'm not compatible with. Compatible, compatible or compatibility always comes with, with as a proposition. Is it clear? So compatible with. Compatibility, I just told you the meaning. The meaning is you check your frequency with the next person whether you understand them whether they are you check the compatibility it could be it could be your employee employer relationship are you compatible with your work environment money are you understanding where you are i mean do, are, do, are you getting used to where you are working are you comp compatible compatible mean checking the compatibility yeah so it's like the frequency checking the frequency so compatible with something this my frequency my tuning that's called tuning is a better word yeah thank you tuning is it tuning? Tuning? So something like this. Uh, how about this? Next one. <clears throat> devoted. He is devoted. Suppose he prays a lot, yeah? A lot of prayers, yeah? So you say he is devoted to or devoted of prayers? He's devoted to prayers. So write this collocation, everyone. Devoted comes with? Too. And you, know, I don't have to tell the meaning here. You already know it. Devoted means something. You're so you're already blindly following something. Faith. It's like blind faith. Devote. Uh, do you know this? A person who is actually devoted is called. Devotee. Suppose. I, oh, Nithika. Wow. Well done. Look at that. I didn't expect this answer. So, devotee. Devotee. Double E in the end. Yeah. So D E V O T double E. Devotee is a person who is actually devoted a blind follower of something yeah or someone that's called devoted uh, how about this different from or different of or different for tell me different a is different 
from B. Apple is different from Samsung. Yeah? What's a banana? B bol diya kuch. Apple is different from banana. Oh, sorry, Apple is different from Samsung. Something like this. PT is different from IELTS. Or you can say P P PT differs from IELTS. Is it clear? So is different from or differs from. But bo in, bo in both the cases, it will be always followed by from, not for. Different from. So A is different from B. How about this? He's very much interested. Uh, easy. Interested on, yeah? No, it's interested with. Yeah? Interested in. So interest always. I have a strong interest dash football. I have a strong interest in football. Yeah. So something. For example, you all have a strong interest in PTE. Yeah. Yeah. So strong interest in PTE or strong interest in grammar or strong interest in Bollywood movies. Something like this. So interested in. So it is a collocation. So let's go through these collocations one by one and then we'll come to grammar rule number two. Accustomed? Bola? Aware? Oh. Capable? Oh. Able? Oh. Uh, see, look at that. Able to. Able always comes with to. Able. I'm able to work. I'm capable to work. Now, I'm capable oh. of working. It always comes with ing. I'm capable of working. I'm able to work. I'm capable of applying. I'm able to apply. I'm capable of traveling. I'm able to travel. Is it clear? The same. It's the same, but there's a, there's a titty tiny difference that most grammarians use. Capable and able may, there's a slight difference. Uh, ability means general thing. So suppose you are, you are saying, I'm able to walk. It's not some sort of power that you have. Everybody is able to walk. But when you say, I'm capable, it's something special you're talking about. Is it clear? So I'm capable, I'm capable of swimming five meters. Well, five meters is not... Enough. I'm capable of swimming 500 kilometers, something like this. Five, five kilometers or something. I'm capable of holding my breath for three minutes underwater, something like this. This is like a special power. But when you use able, able is something which is not special. Able is something. I'm able to talk. He's able to talk. Yeah? So it's not something. But the rule is different. Able to and capable of. How about devoted? Devoted to. How about different? Different from. And last one, interested? In. In. Well done. Did, would you ever make mistakes in, in these collocations ever again? Never do this. And one more thing that's added here. Uh, off is also used, and we always interchange this, these places. Whenever you have cause or reason, there are two different collocations for this one. When you say failure, the cause of my failure, you'll never say the cause for my failure. Is it clear? Although this is a common desi mistake, we end up getting confused with this one. But always remember, we never say what was the cause for your success. Cause will never come with for. It will always be followed by off. Is it clear? Late arrival, bus late I would say what was the cause of this late arrival? Is it clear? Cause of. Or what was the reason for? So let's write it both here. So cause of and reason for. But if you ever say reason for, you're 100% wrong. So you're simply wrong. You can never say what is the reason of. What is the reason of pollution? Now, what is the reason for pollution? Is it clear? See my point? Okay. We learned these. Now let's come to grammar rule number two today, uh, which is very important. I want everybody's full attention here. So today I told you yesterday that we're, we're, we're going to focus uh, on five or six grammar rules. And uh, this is one of them. And I think I need your full attention here because you might miss a lot of information if you don't pay attention. Now, if I have a sentence, and I'm going to write this sentence here. The sentence says, uh, is this already on the dock? Because I need to change the camera angle sometimes, you know? Yeah. OK, all right. So let me write this. The sentence is, yeah, yeah.
fasting today? Say anyone who is fasting today? No one? Okay, uh, can you solve this? This is not a right or wrong question. I just need, I just want you to come up with an answer here. So let's read the sentence, yeah? The people, play in the, field the people dash, and then we have a blank, and then afterwards we've got in the field are rich. The people dash in the field. The people who play, that's our first option, or the people which play, or the people play, or the people played, or the people playing. Now you tell me, what is the answer here? How many of you think it is the first one? Number one, who play? Uh, how many of you think it is the second one, Pe uh, the people play? How many of you think it is the third one, uh, people played? And how many of you think it's the fourth one, people playing? Mm, okay. Do you know this thing? If you chose which play here, first of all, let's eliminate the, 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 the wrong one. Which play cannot be used here because which is, we know it, which is always, how easy, which is always used in, with non living things. Who for, yeah, this is like rule of thumb. Who for people and which for non living? Is it clear? So who? Uh, my mother who cooked good food for me. I cannot say my mother who. Oh, I can't say my, my mother which cooked good for, good for me. This is basic grammar, yeah? So this is something we can't use here. This is eliminated. Let's eliminate this option very quickly. Done. Ah, tell me. Uh, how many of you think the people play? How many of you think second one? The people play. Of course, this is right. Can't I say the people, the people play? But the sentence doesn't finish there. If I say the people play in the field, I need a full stop, isn't it? Are the people play in the field? Full stop. They are rich. The people play in the field, they are rich. But the sentence says people play in the field are rich. Doesn't make sense. Yeah? So I can't have play here. So this sentence is 100% wrong. Now, tell me, can I say people played in the field are rich? Can I say something like people played in the field? Why can't I say played? For the same matter, that if I say people played in the field, the sentence becomes past, doesn't it? And what do I have after it? R. The sentence is already present. And, and that, is, that, is, that is why I can't use played here. But one more thing, if I say the people played in the field, I still need a full stop. Same as like play. People played in the field, full stop. They are rich or they were rich. Is it clear? Something like this. So I can't have play. And the, now you tell me. Now what is the answer? First one or second one? How many of you think it's first one? Raise your hands. People who play. Thank you. How many of you think second one? People playing. How many of you think this question can't be solved? Of course, this question can't be solved. Do you know why? Have you heard of this? This is what my grammar rule is today, guys. Now pay attention. I'll come, I'll come to this. Now, if I write a sentence like this, yeah, <clears throat> if I say Now tell me, what can you see here? The driver driving. driving the bus, yeah? But if I put a full stop here, tell me, do you think this sentence is right or wrong? This sentence is wrong because I need a helping verb. The driver was running the bus, the driver is running the bus, the driver has been running the bus, yeah? Something like this, I need some sort of helping verb here. But if I simply say the driver driving the bus, it doesn't make sense. For the same matter, if I write something like this, the sentence is, yeah, uh, yeah. So the baby, let's write it here. The baby eating the food. Tell me, what do you think about this? The baby eating the food. It's the same as above, isn't it? I can't write this sentence. Both of them are wrong, yeah? yeah. Babe, the baby eating the food. How about this? The planet orbiting around the sun the planet orbiting around the sun 100 percent wrong isn't it i have to say at least the planet is orbiting was 
orbiting has been orbiting can i ever say deep bata mujhe can i ever say uh, i cooking i cooking don't talking to me i am cooking i need a helping verb but can i tell you guys these sentences are 100% right if i have some extension with this sentence and what sort of extension Is the sentence right or wrong? Is the sentence right or wrong now? Tell me. The driver driving the bus is do I need an auxiliary? Do I need an auxiliary? The the driver is driving a bus. Do I need an auxiliary? No, the driver was driving a bus. Do I need an auxiliary? I don't. Do you know Do you know what my main sentence is? The driver is very root and do you know whatever i have in between here is called a present participle that's what i told you yesterday tomorrow we are going to focus on participles this is called present participle and i'm not done don't write don't write nobody touches the pen and look at me everyone tell me what is my activity here what is my verb ing activity here driving isn't it and what is my subject who is driving the driver now do they have a direct relationship or do they have an indirect relationship direct relationship means is the verb action done by the driver or is it done by someone else is done by the driver so the subject and verb has got a direct relationship and present participles are used in active voices active voices whenever you have a direct relationship in active voices so tell me the baby eating the food what is my main sentence the baby cries, cries, cries a lot oh if i want to give some extra information now what sort of baby am i talking about who is this baby oh wo wala baby jo khana kha raha hai not all the babies in the world the baby eating the food cries a lot now tell me active voice passive voice active voice why because i'm using verb plus ing ing is used for active voices is it clear present participle is used for active voices or in in easy terms ing is used for active voices now if, even if i remove the say, even if i remove the, the the beauty of participles is that even if i remove them the sentence is still right. right the sentence there's no mistake the baby cries a lot but if i add them it actually doesn't change the meaning it adds some extra information about the subject baby ke bare mein extra information de raha is it clear so the planet orbiting around the sun is earth the planet orbiting around the sun is earth so main sentence is the planet is earth so similarly guys these are all active voices active voices hamesha kaise use hote hain verb plus I ing now tell me give me i'll give you simple example uh, the guy swimming the guy swimming uh, is my cousin active or passive active yeah the player playing is virat kohli active passive obviously active yeah uh, when you say something like this uh, the television show telecasting telecasting this program is my favorite channel active passive how easy is to do agar maine simply tumhe ye shuru mein ye sentence diya tha active or passive a lot of you might have thought like this so remember verb ing whenever you use verb ing as a participle the sentence is an active voice is it clear is it my point uh, tell me now i have this glass of water i have to open the fast as well allahumma lak Hmm. The glass of water lying on the table is cold. Active passive. Active voice. So active voice kya active voice na bolke we call them present participles. Present participles always are used in verb plus ing and they add something extra to the subject. They give some extra piece of information about the subject. Is it clear? Never ever make a mistake here. Now tell me. Now do you know the best part about present participles? that they can be verb ing so this is something that i i talked here i said the present part, uh, participles are always used in verb plus ing, ING yeah? verb plus ing 
but they can also be replaced with who or which plus the verb. Is it clear? They can also be replaced with who or which plus the verb. So let's use the same examples and let's convert these sentences. The driver driving the bus is very rude. Now, okay, the driver who, who drives the bus is very rude. Uh, the baby eating the food cries a lot. Now, okay, the baby who eats the food cries a lot. The planet orbiting around the sun is Earth. The planet who or which? Which? The planet which orbits around the Earth is? Uh, sorry, the planet which orbi uh, orbits around the sun is? Can you copy all these three sentences and write this rule, everyone, please? These are called present participles. Now look at me everyone. Everybody pay attention and look at me. I'll give you some time to write later on. Now, <clears throat> suppose I have another sentence. Now if you have learned this, you all learned this, yeah? So let's suppose I have another sentence and the sentence is something like this, yeah? IELTS book. Now, let me ask this question to uh, Jadeep. Tell me, is, it, is this sentence right or wrong? The book kept on the shelf. So, kept is third form of keep, yeah? So, keep, kept, and then third form is kept as well. So, keep, kept, kept. Is this right? The book kept on the shelf. Did book place itself on the shelf? How can you say the book kept on the shelf? Book ne uthaya khud ko ek ek page ikhata karke aur almari pe chadke khud ko rakh diya table ke upar. Does it make sense? Book kept on the shelf. What did it keep? What did it keep? Book book. This sentence is hundred percent wrong. How can we correct it? Batao correct it. The book is yeah. The book was. The book was kept on the shelf, or the book is kept on the shelf, isn't it? Kisine rakha. Book didn't keep in itself on the shelf. Yeah, somebody else did it. How about this? When you say uh, the bus driven, yeah, on the road. The bus driven on the road. Can I say the bus driven on the road? The bus is driven on the road, or the bus was driven on the road. Kisner drive kiya, kisner ride kiya, kisner drive kiya, doesn't matter. But here we are saying the bus ko chalaya gaya tha, road ke upar. The bus was driven on the road. So this sentence is 100% wrong, isn't it? Unless and until I put is or was. But the sentence is 100% right if I add some extension. The book kept on the shelf is my favorite yeah, was my favorite book because we we're using past, yeah? Was my favorite book, yeah? The book kept on the shelf was my favorite book. How about this? The bus driven on the road. Now tell me, the bus 
driven on the road yeah the bus driven on the road will never uh, the bus driven on the road can yeah will or will not or can cannot stop anywhere the bus driven on the road um, has no stops is it clear you see my point here so for example the coffee now tell me kisine coffee pengdi coffee uh, you know you buy one dollar coffee from 7-eleven we, we know it you know we love it uh, yeah so one dollar coffee from 7-eleven so suppose i took it and then i all of a sudden accidentally kya word spilled yeah so can i say the coffee spilled did coffee spilled itself the coffee was spilled but i can still say the coffee spilled on the floor was very expensive one yeah or was very cheap because we're talking about one dollar coffee the coffee spilled on the floor was very cheap what is my main sentence here the coffee was very cheap isn't it the coffee was very cheap what is my main sentence here the bus the bus has no stops what is my main sentence here the book was my favorite book yeah or was was my favorite one yeah so the book was my whatever i have in the middle yeah or was was my favorite whatever i have in the middle yeah here is called past participle is it clear not present participle it's called past participle and how do we write this so let's write it past participle is it clear and past participles kaise hum likhte hain yeah so past participles are written as third form of verbs is it clear done yeah so upar upar kaise likhte hain so present participle is doing past participle is done present participle is working helping gaining watching playing following but past participle is helped watched gained followed is it clear you see my point you see the difference between present participle and past participles and they give some extra information about the subject now you tell me in this case let me write it here so past participle will be used as verb third form is it clear so let's write it here done so you have easy let's let's make it easy done is like a variable third form of verb yeah it could be anything it could be followed it could be gained it could be achieved yahan pe verb ing na likhe so let's write doing is it clear how easy is this yeah so very easy doing and done but you can also replace you know in the in the similar way we replace this one with who or which plus verb yeah similarly here it can be also replaced by who or which plus is or was an auxiliary and plus done third form yeah so verb third form so let me tell you what this is so don't feel like oh ye kya ho gaya achanak se now look at this the bus driven on the road has no stops or the bus which had the the uh, sorry the bus which was driven on the road now which had the bus which was driven on the road has had no or has no stops or the coffee spilled on the floor na bolke the coffee which was spilled on the floor was very cheap how about this the book kept on the shelf so kept what am i using kept here i'm using simply done third form na bolke i can say the 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 book which was kept on the shelf was my favorite book is it clear so this rule this this is used for all the passive voices so this is passive and this is active is it clear so did you understand let's write it here this is active oh ye kya ho gaya so this is active and this is passive is it clear now did you understand the difference between participles now today guys yeah so present participle past participle active voice passive voice so how about this if i say uh, the oranges eaten by zishan sir uh, were very cold active passive how easy dekho tum khud hi answer bol rahe ho the orange is growing on orange tree active how easy this am i using present participle past participle present participle because i'm i'm saying the orange is growing on the tree how easy is this is it clear 
will you ever make a mistake because this is very important for your reading blanks participles they might they, they, they will have a blank like this i'm pretty sure they'll have a blank blank here and then you'll have to put the answer here the bus dash on the road do you know you will put driving i'm 100 percent sure but it's wrong it's wrong isn't it it has to be driven is it clear all right done with this one now let's come to next grammar rule guys number three who i know i took a while but you know what can you do with these grammar rules anyway you know if i go through these very very quickly you won't understand what is present participle i have to take my time here you know did you understand this one though yeah all right now let me eat an orange well this is not a sentence this is something i want to tell you okay now i'm going to write a sentence here and tell me what do you think about this sentence <clears throat> Simple, short, and sweet. Now tell me, um, Hitesh, yeah? Snehal, oh, sorry, Snehal. Oh, the coffee, yeah? Oh, wow, look at that. All right, uh, Snehal, tell me. Can you read the sentence here very quickly? What does it say? I knew her since 12 years. Hindi, me sorry to use a little Hindi. I tell me, what do you think about this sentence? Pick a mistake, Snehal, and tell us where is a mistake. Snehal, this question is for Snehal. No, you can't say it. Jadeep, tell me. Jadeep is like, Mujhe jata hai let me ask uh, someone else. Uh, Chetan, eh? Chetan, can you tell me what is the mistake here? I knew her. It should be, I know her. I know her since 12 years. Wow. Uh, I, knew her for 12 years. I knew her for 12 years. Why for? It's a specific period of time. It's 12 years. What do we want? Since 1980 or since like one. Okay, so you are saying that I have used duration here, yeah? So you want to change it with a date, particular date, yeah? yeah. So since comes with a period. Okay, let me change it. Barasal pele jao. 2019, yeah? 2007, yeah? Suppose, suppose for example, 2007. Tell me, Gurmeet, pick a mistake. The mistake is still there. Tell me. It should be I know her, yeah? Now let's replace it. Done. Well done. Now pick a mistake. No more mistakes. Wow, I think I've confused you, yeah? I understand this thing. The, the, my point today with this particular rule, you will learn it. And I'm pretty sure, guys, next time, if I ask you after, even, even after two to three weeks time, you will remember this rule for for eternity, I believe, if you pay attention. What is perfect continuous? What is perfect continuous? It's not that I'm perfect continuous. Kya? Ye teja teja kya? So, this is. So, uh, yeah. I have been knowing her. See, always talk like this. Never use those difficult terms with me. Uh, look at this, guys. This is very important, and you will learn it for eternity. This is very important. Now, in this particular case, now remember one thing always. Suppose I uh, suppose um, I'm working here, yeah? It's been roughly because I joined in the in 2015, 16, I believe. So it's been now three years, yeah? So in the in the in, in that PT. So if I use this three years time period, this is a timeline, isn't it? So this timeline, is it like a particular time or is it like duration? This is like a time duration there is no starting point 
There's no beginning. There's no finishing. It's like the duration. Four hours. Is it a starting point or is it a duration? Four hours is duration. Four minutes. Four years. Duration, isn't it? Whenever you talk about duration, you always use four. All the time, yeah? So you say something like this. Four comes with four for four years. Four, five days. Four, five years. Four, five hours. But if it is like a particular point in the past, you use since. Monday. Is it a duration? It's a, it's a particular point. So you'll say since Monday. Last night. Is it like a duration or, or a particular point? Particular point in the past, you'll use since 1994. Is it like a duration or is it like a particular point in the past? Particular time in the past. So you'll use since September. Since. It's a particular point in the past. So since is used for starting point. For is used for duration. So if Gurmeet has changed this sentence, the sentence says, I know her since 2007. So since I've used since 2007. The sentence is? Right, but the sentence is wrong. Do you know why? Because whenever you use since, the rule is you will always use two since, two tenses with it. It can never come with simple past. It can never come with present tense. It can never come with future. It will only come with two tenses. And those two tenses are, yeah, I has or have, he has or I have, yeah, and then Verb third form, yeah. Verb third form, kya hua? Known, seen, yeah. Hidden, yeah. Third form, yeah. R ring, rang. Third form, kya hai? Rung, not ringed. Ring, rang, and then rung. R U N G. So, kaise hoga? Rung third form. Is it clear? So, either you use has or have plus third form. With since, or you will use. Can I use karoge? Let's write it here. Has or have plus being plus doing something. So let's write it like this: doing something. And I'll, I'm going to go through this rule again. Don't worry. I mean, both the grammar gusar diya yahan pe. So pay attention. Look at this. I know her since 2007. Wrong, isn't it? I have known. Her since 2007. Or I have been knowing her. Doing kya hai? Knowing. I have been knowing her since 2007. Television ki baat karte ho. Uh, I saw television since, uh, since, uh, uh, since 1991. Or I, I have seen television since 1991. Or I have been seeing television since 1991 working jab maine look at me everyone how did i say i have worked at imdaz pt since 2016 na i have been working at imdaz pt since barish ki baat karte ho yeah? so barish pad rahi hai lagatar morning se morning is like duration or a particular point in the past particular point in the past so kaise likhoge bolo it has been raining since it has been raining since morning or it has rained since morning can i ever say it rained since morning wrong can i ever say it rained since morning wrong it since always use it since and for both of them always used to always use uh, always come with either present perfect has done have done or has been doing or have been doing Forget about this verb ing and blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, say yadrako. Kese has or have done or has been have been doing. Can you write it, please? Both of them, please, everyone. So let me actually change it here too. So let's make it easy. So it can come with either has, you know, has for singular, have for singular, yeah. Plural. So has or have done or has or have been doing. So for both since as well as for, is it clear? But what is the difference between since and for? For will be used 
with the duration and since will be used for a particular point in the past. Is it clear, guys? Did you understand this one? Oh, I love these grammar rules. Don't you feel excited when you learn something new? Some people are like, <sighs> All right. Let's come to the next grammar rule. Number four. Everyone, uh, copy this. I'll give you some time to copy this one. And last time I told you guys, uh, for people who are watching us online too, uh, that there is a good reference book. You can start and prepare your grammar. And you can at least be good in grammar. You can better. You can be better than yesterday by doing that. The, uh, by going through those units. The name of the grammar book is Grammar in Use by Raymond Murphy. Let me write it here. Raymond Murphy. This is Raymond, not Dan. Yeah. Don't go to something else. Yeah. All right, so Raymond Murphy. So this is such a zabardust grammar book for you and go for intermediate version. And trust me, guys, your reading blanks will automatically be good. Effortless. All you have to do is just go through those units. But if you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and struggling and keep on struggling in reading section without actually doing something about it, that's not going to be beneficial. Yesterday, Ilkar was asking me the same thing, how to improve grammar. This is such a about the Ilka, did you go through? I'm, I'm sure you didn't go through this. Please make sure that you guys go through this, go through this book. Do you know when I started with, with IELTS, when I, I mean, when I was a student in IELTS and all those uh, in, 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 in PT initially for that matter, this is something I used to do on a daily basis, 15, and I'm not making this up. Trust me, I went through this grammar, grammar book on a daily basis, and I used to force myself to do exercises from this so that I learned something, some new rules and apply it in the exercises. Learn rules. There were roughly two to three rules on left hand side and on the right hand side there are some exercises. You learn the rule, it's still fresh and you apply it in the exercise. You learn a rule, apply it in the exercise. Just like fifth, sixth standard grammar, you know. But uh, this is unfortunate thing that we don't actually go through this one, you know. We, we don't have time in this country, what can we do? Australia is such a mundane and mechanical country. Don't you think so? Don't you think Monday is the same as Tuesday? Tuesday is the same as Wednesday. It's like the same thing. But when you go back home, Nepal, India, every day is like a different day, isn't it? Monday you do something. Tuesday you do something else. Wednesday you have got something else to do, totally different. By the time you hit Friday, you're already like, you can recognize, oh, Monday I did this, Tuesday I did that. But here, every day is the same day, isn't it? Just go and shift, 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 and then go back. So I know you don't get enough time to go, but if you can do it in bits and pieces, like one. Because suppose, for example, I, I told you about this. I, uh, I bought a book uh, called Untrain Your Brain. I hate reading. I don't like to read. Who likes to read in the modern world? Of course, there are a few guinea Chine people who love to read. I can't, I can't read. Trust me, I hate reading. I feel like after in the second paragraph, I feel like this. Second or third paragraph. Uh, what can I do? How can I, how can I finish this book anyway? I force myself to read three pages every day, no matter what. Three pages, I'll do three pages. No more than, not even one single more page than this. Three page and that's it. I'm going to shut it down. So in baby steps, you know, one at a time. So sir, atomic habits. Atomic habits? Atomic habits. So this is something Zabardas, these people, I uh, sir, talked about this and I went through this summary while I, while, while I was there. You know, you have audio books and then you have summary of audio books. If you don't have five hours or nine hours to listen to the audio book, you can go through the summary of that audiobook, just 20 minutes. So I went through the summary and they explained it in, a, in a, such a profound way that we are the result of our habits, that we are here today in this particular. So if you are here, it's because of your habits. Is it clear? If you are struggling, it's because of your habits. How can you change habit? Step by step, step by step, step by step. So I learned this yesterday. I felt really, really amazing. Wow, sir, it's class me bath karte iske bare mein. And then, you know. I got to listen to it and I thought, wow, this thing the Sergio Barbar Bolte. So whenever you develop something like, um, you know, you feel like you're not going, you, you don't want to go for exercise. So you don't go for exercise now. You feel like uh, tomorrow, uh, let me not go for an exercise too. So I, let's do it day after tomorrow. If you miss it once, this is what, this, this is the quote they were talking about in the audio. They said, if you make a mistake once, it's an accident. But if you make it, make it one more time, it's a bad habit. It's the first step of bad habit. See my point? 
So don't let it, don't make the same mistake two times. Otherwise, it will convert into a bad habit. Is it clear? So this is not for you. This is for me. I'm reminding it myself. So I am telling you to do it as well. Trust me. It's such a beautiful thing. So make it a habit. Just three exercises per day from Raymond Murphy. Three exercises. No more than that. I'm not going to do one single, one more sentence more than these three exercises. That's it. Or maybe two exercises. Or one exercise. Depend upon, depends upon how much time do you have at home. One exercise. How beautiful is it when I'm explaining a rule, you already know it. I know the explanation. What is the explanation? And you come up with the answer. See the feeling that is like, I have done something productive at home. You know? Okay. Now let's come to the next grammar rule, guys. Pay attention. <clears throat> oh, I love this one. <clears throat> or maybe something let's make it shorter Tell me, uh, let me ask this to, I forgot your name, sorry. Akshay. Akshay, come up with a Kiladi answer for this one. The bank told me that $300 are equivalent to 4,000 rupees, 14,000 rupees. Aise hai na, I think it's roughly around the same. Aajkal jo hala chal rahe is the same. Tell me, what is the mistake here, Akshay? Okay, let, let me make it simple. If you don't understand it, Akshay, particularly for you, very simple. Very simple. Tell me, what is the answer here? Forget about sentence number one. Tell me what do you think about this one. I made it a lot more simpler for you. Now, you can't say Nitika. Four weeks is a long time. How many think it's is? Four weeks is. What is this? She's like this. So four weeks. Uh, tell me, Chatur, what do you think? Four weeks is a remember this thing, guys. Can you write these three things? Write it down. Money. I should write it here. Let me actually write it here. Money, and you write it too. You write it too. Don't be lazy. Money, duration, time duration, and distance. Money, I, talk, I talked about these three things, yeah? MDD. MDD. Money, distance, duration. Money, duration, distance. Something like this. Whenever you see any of these three in the sentence, you will always count them as singular nouns. Is it clear? Do you see my point? Singular nouns. I'm going to tell you that $300 is equivalent or are equivalent? Is equivalent. This sentence is 100% wrong. But let's write it here. This sentence is wrong. Now tell me 14 kilometers is, um, has or have? 14 kilometers have been traversed. Or 14 kilo kilometers have has been traversed. 14 kilometers has been traversed. How odd does it sound? Oh, it should be have because kilometers. No, when you talk about duration, when you talk about distance, and when you talk about money, they will all be counted as singular. Is it clear? You see my point? So $300 is a huge amount. Yeah, not are a huge amount. $300 is a huge amount. Um, but if you say uh, something like this, uh, you say uh, five hours. Five hours was or were? Five hours was. Is it clear? Not were. Can you write this example, please, everyone, on your notebook? I want you. To, I want you guys to write it too, not just read it from the word. Because when you write, you know, you remember it more compared to how, when you only just look at look at the television.
Now the last one, we will finish this with a quick quiz of one of the, I'll pick any of the grammar rule that I did from past, uh, well, for, 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 for past couple of weeks, all those grammar rules, I'll pick any of the grammar rule and I want all of you guys, because mostly some of the faces I remember, they were here in the class. So just like a quiz for you, see, for me to check whether you revise grammar at home or not. How about this? So let's write it here. So this is going to be a quick quiz for you guys. I'll pick any, yeah? And you tell me. So this is for today's quiz, guys. Forget everything else and tell me. We did it in the past. Who can answer this? Just raise your hands. Tell me if, the, if you think there's a mistake here. Now, before I go to, before I go and explain this rule, tell me, what am I testing you here? What sort of rule is this? Conditional statements. Remember we did conditionals? Sentence begins with N, if, yeah. Now tell me, is this sentence right or wrong? Huh? For those people who missed conditionals, don't worry. I'll do it again. For those people who were present in that class, this is for those people. This sentence is 100% right. How do you know this? How do you check it? What do, what do I have in class one? Had plus? Third form. If I had arrived, if I had, if I had, if I had drunk, if I had played, if I had gained, if I had hidden, and if I have had plus third form in clause one, what should I see in clause two? Would have, could have, or might have. Are both of the, uh, are both of the criteria fulfilled? Of course, both of them are fulfilled. Hundred sentences, hundred percent right. Agar maine cricket khela hota, to aaj main star hota. If I had played cricket. I would be a star or would I would have been a star? I would have been a star. Is it clear? See my point? Agar maine baad mein shaadi ki hoti to mein happy hota. Yeah? So kaise bologe? If I had married later, I would be happy or I would have been happier? I would have been happy. So this sentence is 100%. Right, so some of you remember it. Thank you very much. Other branches, guys, can you please disconnect? Thank you very much. You start with the PD class and people who were online with us. Thank you so much for your time. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Press the bell, bell icon. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, thank you so much, um, online people. And let's start our PT class. Yeah. <clears throat>